Hello folks, it's always great to be back with you for another tutorial on Scoring Tools Masterclass. What you have just heard was a virtual orchestra playing Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Yes, the same symphony that meant a great challenge for many sample libraries in the past. But this time things have been a little different, or I would say a lot different. This is the first episode of a short series where I will talk about the most difficult articulations for virtual string instruments. Keep in mind that what may be difficult for a virtual instrument may be easy for a real player and vice versa. If you want to be a good MIDI programmer, you have to be aware of both sides. Today, I would like to talk about the latest advancements in virtual instruments and how they provided us a possibility to replicate in our computers what we hear in the real world. And in this series, I will specifically talk about sample modeling, which is the strings that you have just heard in the Fifth Symphony. The first thing that I would like to discuss with you is about aggressiveness. I've already heard several attempts to make the opening of the Fifth Symphony. Most sample libraries today have in their pool a good variety of short notes from Spiccato to Detaché, uh, Spiccato being in the shortest one and Detaché being the longest one in the realm of short articulations. At first, when we want to simulate the opening of the team, we think of those short notes in fortissimo. This is a good start for a realistic mock-up, but we will eventually end up in frustration. Sample libraries have recorded articulations, and even though there were some good attempts to record emotions, most of the articulations were recorded to be used on the greatest variety of phrases. So we can call them generic articulations. In the opening of the Fifth Symphony, there is a very specific kind of bowing. A good string ensemble will bow their instruments in a very aggressive way, which is not spiccato, neither staccato. This is more like a string detaché with at least two lengths. The three first are short ones. And the following E flat is the longer one. And then there's another repetition, three short ones. And then a long one. Therefore, working with pre-recorded samples, you would need two articulations for these first notes. So far so good, but samples have those generic articulations that even though they work for most occasions, they will struggle for very specific bowing like the opening of the Fifth Symphony. Just try this out yourself and you realize how difficult it will be to achieve a specific bone with the same energy as this piece. You would probably need more than two articulations actually. Some of them for the attack of the notes to get the right attack and some others for the body of the note to get the right character for the body. Probably you would also need to stretch and squeeze samples. Well, this is very laborious. Now, I'd like to show you each section of sample modeling strings playing the beginning of the Fifth Symphony. Let's first start with Violins 1. I will put it in solo and let's hear only Violins 1. All right. First of all, red and orange means very high velocity high velocity which means a very sharp attack which means aggressiveness violins too they sound like this all right 
violas, one octave lower. Let's show them right here. Cellos. And basses. By the way, basses are in unison with cellos in his orchestration. Now, there's some very high velocities as I just explained, but right here, I assign the dynamics for modulation with CC1. And as you can see, the modulation is set very high. But, instead of working on something like this, You don't need that kind of aggressiveness. Let's see how it sounds. Very computer-like or robotic. You need something more like this, which are the ramps that I showed in one of the previous free tutorials. But one interesting thing is that on short notes, you don't need to take care about going up and down with the dynamics, not as much as the long notes. But on the long notes, we have the attack, and then the decay, and then another ramp up, and then down. And as a matter of fact, it happens in all. It happens in all sections. Violence two. And as you remember, you just saw it on the other sections, they are all programmed like this. This is a simulation of a rebo. Actually, there's no rebo simul being simulated here on sample modeling, but it's just a simulation because some orchestras, they play this long note with a rebo. As you know, this is fortissimo, and on fortissimos, the the string players, they slide their bow faster in order to get that dynamic. And sometimes on longer notes, they have to rebow. And this is, a, this is a slight simulation of the rebow, which would go down and then up again, and then the release a little bit down. All right. Another thing that I would like to show you is over here. Measure 38. Zooming in. This is the phrase going up. All right. This phrase is mostly composed by short notes, which you can put staccato or spiccato, what sounds best for you. Three short notes and one legato note. But the, the problem is, if you're working with pre-recorded samples, it would sound okay here in the short notes, but you would have to work on this thing. There's a kind of accentuation on these notes that even though it is not in the score, you have to accentuate it not just because it's legato, but it's because but because the, the downbeat and serve as a support for the phrase. You could use a key switch where here you'd have spiccato or staccato, and right here you'd have a legato patch. But a legato patch would not have the right attack, even though you'd have a legato here, and probably not the right release. Some patches come with a sharp attack for legato, but I am in the favor of using less patches, less key switches, less instruments. If you are part of the Scoring Tour Masterclass, you know pretty well what I'm talking about. The least, the best, 
And what happens here in sample modeling is because sample modeling responds according to your MIDI programming. If you have an overlap between notes, it will overlap as a legato, and the attack of this note will match with the previous attacks. And the result is something like this. There's a constant crescendo here that goes from 50 to 127. There isn't any kind of crossfade between layers and you can perceive how smooth the crescendo is. Now, on measure 70, Let's hear it, violins one and two. All right, here I have programmed all the accentuations. And here is violins one and two. They play on octaves and right here they play in unison back again. But what I would like to call your attention is to these ramp up, which means a small crescendo in this phrase that is not notated in the score and is not even supposed to be notated because it's not a change in the dynamic, but actually it's just a interpretation. This is my interpretation that, that actually I've heard on many real orchestras. So pay attention how it goes up. It's very subtle, but let's do the following. If we keep everything at 127, let's hear how it sounds. You can see how unrealistic it sounds. It sounds a little bit robotic. Going back. So this is a new possibility that you can have with sample modeling strings because now you have your own interpretation. This is not, again, this is not something that Beethoven wrote in the score, but probably he meant it and I simulated it on here. Both of them are fortissimo. From 91 probably it's just forte, but it goes to fortissimo. And you don't lose any kind of volume here. It's just a matter of expression. And again, no crossfade, no round robins. It just sounds performed. Now going to the lower sections, violas, cellos, and basses. probably never heard Beethoven's Fifth Symphony like this, just some sections separately. All right, going to the viola. Here the violas are playing with violins two, while violins one is playing the smooth second idea of the symphony. And this is actually the only key switch that I have used. 
This is B flat, which triggers the high position. I, I decided to use high position here because I want a, a smoother sound. As you know, the higher you play, the more intense it becomes the sound and less bright. And I wanted to call less attention to these to these pads composed by two notes, one for violins two and another one for viola. Here is viola and the higher one is violins two. They were just accompaniment and they were not supposed to show off. So I decided to put high position for them. Now, going to the cellos and basses, Let's hear what happens in 29. Thirty-three. And fifty-two. All right. The three ones have the same idea, except for the fact that this one is the longest note of all. But it, these ones are very similar to each other. The first one is the most aggressive, again. The second one is less aggressive. And the third is the smooth one. This is very interesting because as the library responds to your programming, you can have subtle changes like this, a little bit aggressive, and smooth. But now, let's go a little bit further and let's say that this thing is too short for me. It sounds good, but let's say it's too short. I wanted it longer. And the level of customization that it can have with it is amazing. Okay, these are two interpretations that you can have for the same phrase. They don't make a big difference, but tiny little differences here, tiny little differences there, here, there, here, and there. In the overall entire piece, it becomes a very different kind of interpretation. So you are not being dictated by the, the recorded samples anymore. You have the freedom to shape the articulations the way you want. Once again, a second interpretation for this phrase and the original one shorter very smooth difference but means a lot in the overhaul sound all right that's been the beethoven's fifth symphony and and i showed you a little bit of the versatility that you can have with the right programming that's the end of this free tutorial, and I hope you liked it. In a few days, I will be back with another episode of taking your strings to the next level, but this time with other strings examples. See you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.